Shut your eyes, Marie, and don't look at it no matter what happens. In Raiders of the Lost Ark, Bellic's head blows up, Dietrich's head shrinks, and Tote's head melts right down to the skull. And so, you know, I said, fine, how are we going to do this? I had no idea how we were going to pull this off. So I certainly had the actors pose in the different positions. I had Bellic scream. I had Tote scream. I had Dietrich scream. And that's all ILM had. And it was up to them to go off and bring back to me an effect that was suitable. And I was amazed, especially at the melting head. I thought that was one of the most amazing effects I'd ever seen. And I love as the hat no longer fits him, but comes lower and lower and lower as the face drops away. It's pretty gory, pretty gross, but I love that effect. When it was brought to me and said, we, you know, let's, let's do the, the melting bit on it, I kind of said, okay, there's got to be a way to do that. I, <laughs> I'd never done it before, hadn't really done anything like it before. I didn't know anybody who'd done anything like it before. And the interesting thing is that the guys at Kerner Optical, which is the sort of model shop, creature shop, now separated from ILM, they're going through a simplified version of what I did to illustrate the basic steps of the process. And they'll be doing the casting an actor to get the negative mold. They'll be doing an underskull. They'll be doing the layers of gelatin to get the same basic effect. But I'll be very interested to see how they deal with it uh, because it was, it was a challenging shot. Okay, here we go. This is a rehearsal. Laughing and turning, Ronnie. The shot required Ronnie Lacey to have a facial cast, and that's I've had that done myself, and it's no fun. It's basically you're putting this goop on your face, this rubber material. The original uh, makeup man on the show would have used a material we call alginate, which is a material that dentists use a lot to take impressions of teeth, only we use it to take entire impressions of the head. So once they get that facial cast, then you have to go in and sculpt and fix and open the eyes and put eyes there and all this kind of stuff. So it was a very trepidatious experiment. Basically what I did was I took the negative mold, which was the face of the character, and the under skull had to be made out of stone to withstand the heat. And I had to sculpt it to actually sort of match the, the, the negative image of uh, the character. And then I left, uh, you know, a space in there for the dimension of, of the skin. I had worked with gelatin before and knew that it melted at, at a, you know, and was still very thick. So I decided to go with that. And what I developed was a formula for the gelatin so that it was extremely delicate. Uh, it melted at a very low temperature. Uh, but it also didn't last very long, which caused a lot of concerns. And the way it worked <laughs> was that I painted in very thin layers of gelatin every step of the way, each one a little bit different color. And as I did so, I would layer in veins. Some veins were made out of literally colored yarn soaked in gelatin so that there was stuff that would be dripping off and falling off as it happened. <laughs> Thank you. 
when we did the actual effect, it wound up being two propane space heaters headed straight on it, and I was underneath it with a heat gun with this hot gelatin dripping down on me, kind of like, oh, that's, that needs to melt a little quicker over here, and, and so really making moment-by-moment -moment adjustments. Even though uh, I got the gelatin move, uh, melting fairly quickly, it still was a long process. It still melted for, I think it was 10 minutes or something like that, eight or 10 minutes maybe. And so they had to speed it up in the lab. We did the shot. It went pretty darn well, actually, I thought, I, because I'd only done maybe three or four full tests of different gelatin mixes before I got to this one. But the other ones just melted all wrong and fell off before they were melted. And so we got really lucky on that take and, and everything worked really well. And it seemed to be a pretty effective shot in the film, so in the end I was happy with it. I cannot begin to tell you how many phone calls I got about that effect. Not just people who, you know, really appreciate it or are fans or whatever, but a lot of other makeup men, because everybody, suddenly everybody wanted to melt a head somewhere. And they were, so how did you do it? What was the formula? And I'm like, oh, I should have just published it somewhere, and, you know, uh, let everybody know that way. Because I, I, and I still get people who say, I love that effect. I, you know, how did you do that? And, you know, it's, it, and it's been a long time. I think the most effective way to do the same effect today would be to do it practically the way I did it, but then computer enhance it afterwards because there's a lot of stuff that shows up now. It shows the technique of what it was, but there's a lot, so much you can do with computers for cleaning up edges, smoothing things out, controlling compression, and a lot of the other elements that really, you know, bring it up. But you could use the same techniques to give the basic information for a computer to really embellish. I think that Tote's melting head is one of those images, once you've seen it, you never forget it. I mean, it's, it's grotesque and it's hideous to think about it, but once it's in the mind, it'll never leave. Oh.